welcome. Today we're gonna jump in and answer some questions live on air. And I've got my daughter, Everly, with me. Say hello, everybody. Hi. Oh, there she is. Come on, we're gonna have a great time today. Welcome to all the new subscribers. I'm gonna be answering your questions about the Bible. And so I want you to bring the hardest questions you can. I am a certified licensed and ordained real pastor. And I've read the Bible several times through from Genesis to Revelation. I'm gonna give you the best answers that I can. I'm gonna speak prophetically, which means uh, I'm gonna give you guys some answers. <laughs> You just started playing yourself on your phone. <laughs> I'm playing on my phone right now. You here, maybe put that up to the screen. So Everly's gonna hang with me. She, yeah, here, put that up to the screen for a second. <laughs> Drop a comment, let me know where you're watching from. And can you help me and say hello to Everly, Everly Faith? Everly. <laughs> Everly, is there anything that you would like to tell the world? That Tyge and Caroline are right over there. Oh, this is Tyge and Caroline. And Silky. And Silky. Which is blanket. These are her stuffed animals. My and favorite. And Silky. <laughs> you can't forget about Silky. I'm going to be answering your questions tonight. I'm going to be speaking to you prophetically and telling you some things that the Lord has been speaking to me. Let me know if you hear the music and if it's at a good volume or not. I have no idea. But I'm going to ask you guys that you would help me. If you really love the Signorelli family, <laughs> would you jump out of the chat and go hit the thumbs up on this video? Let's try to get 1,000 thumbs up on this video so as many people as possible tune in. And then you're going to want to stick around because I'm going to be speaking prophetically and it's uh, someone said we can't hear the music. Don't hear the music. Oh, oh, now do you hear it? Hopefully you hear it. <laughs> Sounds so good in my ears. Oh man. Hey, so tonight is, um, you know, going to be, a, it's all oh, Christina says already thumbs up. Christina Ramirez. So good to see you. Bobby, hey, drop a comment so I can give you guys some shout outs in the chat. I would love to say your name out loud. Radar, did I say it right now? <laughs> or Radar Apologetics, Jody, Alexander Smith, Mia, Eric, hey, love you too, my man. Uh, Tiana Harris, good to see you too. Hey, how many breakers do I have in the chat? Drop a comment if you are a breaker. Oh, look at this. Look at all these comments coming in. <laughs> Uh oh, does daughter number two want to make a special guest appearance? Bella, Bella, Bella. All right, come on, hurry, 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 because we got to get started. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there she is. This is my daughter, Bella. Starting in December, Bella is going to be helping me a lot with the streams and the YouTube channel. And like, this is kind of funny, but her first job, I said, you're going to work for your dad and you're going to help me with my YouTube channel. So would you like to say anything to, to anybody out there? I love you guys. You're my family. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, <I'll> see <laughs> All right. She's going to have her sweet 16 uh, on January 12th. Are you good, Everly? I'm all, yeah. <laughs> you guys are goofballs. They have never wanted to be in the stream ever. No, Bella has. I have. Oh, okay, okay. So that was a breakthrough moment that you guys just witnessed. But um, hello, 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 wherever you're watching from around the world. We are in New York City, and it is such an awesome November day. But I don't want to waste any time because I got literally hundreds of questions from all around the world. And I want to use this as a chance to talk about the scriptures. I want to talk prophetically some things that the Lord's been speaking to me. And we're going to just have a good time in the Lord. But if you guys are like, Pastor Mike, how can I help you? I'm telling you right now, hit the thumbs up and then hit the share button and share this with somebody because, you know, pastors are not real people to other people. And I'm a pastor and there's been people that they, they, it would heal their heart to be on this broadcast right now. And so why don't you do this? Drop your comments in the chat. I'm going to pull up some questions that I have now. And so whatever question you have for me and try to stump me, you know what I mean? Okay, somebody just asked a question. What church do you preach at? I want to come visit. 
and I need deliverance, you can always come to my church. It's V1 Church. So if you go to v1.church, that's our website, www.v1.church, you can come and hang out with us any week. And we have three locations all around the United States, and we have revival homes all around the world. So you can come check that out. All right, let me see here. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let me pull your questions up. So what questions do you have for me? Are you taking chat questions? I really need help and advice. Yes, I am. I'm taking chat questions as well. And then I am looking at what came in through my other social media channels. So please, by all means, drop a comment and let me know what questions that you have. I would love, love, love to answer your questions tonight. And it's going to be a good old time. All right. I'm going to jump in, jump, drop them in the chat though. And my admins are going to be looking at the chat as well. And okay. So let me start with this one. Here's the thing. Leave us, leave this on in the background. And so this would be a really great broadcast to just have it on while you're chilling in the house, while you're in the car, while you're taking a walk, whatever you're doing right now, just leave this broadcast on. Because usually when I answer a question for one person, I'm answering the question for so many more people. And so their questions probably are your questions. All right. So we're going to jump right in. Somebody said, have you read the lost books of the Bible? So my answer, to that question is when you study how scripture was canonized, in other words, how were the books of the Bible, uh, how were they actually brought together into one cohesive book that we now know as the Bible, all 66 individual books comprising one book, the Bible, there was a very rigorous process that there, uh, that partly, I don't want to jump into it in too much depth, but it had to cross-reference itself. And so in other words, it could not contradict itself in any explicit way. Um, there are seeming contradictions of the existing Bible, but the Bible, I believe, is is perfect and it is infallible. And so um, the some of the what's referred to as the lost books of the Bible are books of the Bible that um, didn't meet the stringent requirements to be put into the canonized Bible. So that means it could have like blatantly contradicted core fundamental beliefs um, that were explicitly said in other books of the Bible. Uh, it could be that the manuscripts were written too late, like outside that type of thing. And so I wouldn't get too hung up in in that I would say you want to read Matthew, you want to read uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Galatians. Come on, somebody, read the 66 books of the Bible. Why don't you master the books that are canonized before you waste your time with the lost books of the Bible? Okay, I'm going to be picking up the pace and I'm going to try to get to as many questions as possible. The best thing that you guys could do on this Giving Tuesday, though, is consider sowing into the ministry as I'm answering these questions. If you haven't given for Giving Tuesday. I have my Cash App, my Venmo. You can become a monthly partner. It's all on the screen right there. And then the pinned comments here in this YouTube broadcast are also places that you can give. And I want you to consider sewing into the ministry now while I'm answering questions because I am planning many, many trips throughout the United States and even other countries in 2023. And I want to come minister to you in person. And the way that I do that is by raising finances. So consider sewing. It's all there. Okay. So somebody asked this question. Do you think that fibromyalgia is demonic? Now, let, let me just always use the Bible with my answer. The Bible talks about the spirit of infirmity, which means that sometimes it is biological and sometimes it's spiritual. You cannot treat a spiritual issue with medical means. As a matter of fact, there's people all around the world that I pray for that actually come to me and they say, Pastor Mike, it's so crazy because, um, you know, I've got these issues that the the doctors can't, you know, I know they know something's wrong, but they can't tell me what's wrong. And I say, did you ever deal with the spirit of infirmity? And as a matter of fact, let's talk about fibromyalgia. I do believe that some people need a physical healing but I also believe that there are other people that have received a fibromyalgia diagnosis that actually need deliverance from the spirit of infirmity, okay? Love you too, babe. All right, here's a question. I'm just gonna go ahead and answer it. And this is, if some of y'all might even, 
Woo! I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to answer this question. Some of you might leave the chat. Some of you might unfollow me. Some of you might unsubscribe. So I'm going there. Somebody asked the question, do y'all celebrate Christmas? If so, what do you do differently? Now, I w- want to explain. I took a very hardline stance against Halloween. And I had all of all of y'all celebrating the fact that your pastor was casting out demons and doing deliverance on Halloween. All right. Because what I said was, was two things. One, it's irredeemable. And so when you talk about the, the roots of Halloween, the number two, what I said is that in this particular climate, we are not in the era of redeeming. We are in the era of rejecting, right? We're not trying to redeem something evil and dark and murderous and demonic. We are rejecting, not redeeming. And everybody celebrated that answer. And y'all were like, that's my pastor. And I, and I had a viral quote that said, my favorite Halloween tradition is casting out demons. But for Christmas, even though it has pagan roots, the, 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 the heart of the Christmas celebration is celebrating the birth of our Savior. And that's, that's what I need you to understand. It's about the intention the, and the heart behind it. So do I celebrate great Christ miss Christmas. Do I believe that Jesus was born of a Virgin Mary come on in Bethlehem, that he lived a sinless, perfect life and that he was crucified on the third day rose again. Absolutely. I believe it. Smash the thumbs up if you believe it too. And so here's the thing. They are trying to take this time of the year and they are trying to say it's a holiday season because they want to delete Christ out of Christmas. So I think the most important thing that we can do is celebrate Christ during Christmas. And some of you guys who are so concerned about, is this demonic and is that demonic and this and this and this is demonic. It's like there is a big difference between, you know, there's a big difference between Halloween that is overtly dark and demonic and Christmas that uh, ubiquitously celebrates Christ, okay? So I just want to make it clear, like we celebrate Christ during Christmas and that's okay. And I think you can get caught up in materialism and if the greatest gift that you give to your kids is a toy and not the gift of salvation through Jesus, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I would just say, don't get so hung up. There's some people that's like, it's pagan and blah, 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 blah. It's like, listen, the world is celebrating Christmas. Use it as an opportunity to celebrate Christ. What is so hard about that? What's so scandalous about that? All right, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Um, and it's and it really what it comes down to, because I see some of the comments and everybody's flaring up already. There's people already flaring up. The thing about it is this. I've been in Bethlehem. I have traveled to Bethlehem in Israel. I just went back for the second time. And it is more than appropriate to say, was he born in December? Probably not. You know, it's not it's not a historically accurate uh, holiday for the timeline. Did the Jews have any kind of celebration or feast that coexisted with it? Not necessarily. It's just simply something, again, there's three categories, reject, accept, redeem. And so with Christmas, even though it had pagan origins, they they it, they actually decided to celebrate Christ. And then you just say, do I accept this? Do I reject it or do I redeem it? This would be in the category of redeem redeem. They're going to make it about materialism. They're going to make it about the holidays. They're going to make it about family. The Bible actually says, my family is the one who does the will of my father. And so don't make it about physical family and not make it about spiritual family. Don't make it about gifts, but not make it about the gift of salvation. So it's all about intention. All right. What's going on, Jonathan? I see you guys in the chat. Jonathan, what's up, my man? Good to see you in the chat. Cindy Roman. Hey, hey, uh, man, some of these are going by fast. Keep, keep with your comments. I'm going to do as many as I can tonight and hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. Okay. How, how come God's people live humble, meager lives, but people who are not as holy live opulent? You know, one of the scriptures actually says, God, why do I see the wicked prosper? But I want to remind you that here's what the Bible says. 
The wicked are like grass that grow on the roof. They sprout up for a season and then they wither away. Don't ever make the mistake of thinking that somebody is getting ahead because they could be winning by the world standard, but losing by the eternal standard. And so we are not victims and it might look like people are getting ahead. Thank you for the super chats, by the way. It may look like people are getting ahead. Come on, is this good? It may look like people are advancing, but what? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world yet lose their own soul? Oh, is this helping anybody? So you could, you could have the house, but here's the question. Does that, do you own the house or does the house own you? Do you own the car or does the car own you? Come on. Is this helping anybody? Throw a fireball in the chat if this is helping. Thank you, Jennifer Jennings, for that very, very, very gracious Super chat. Y'all are making it rain today financially. I'm going to try to get to as many comments as possible, though. Man, look at all these super chats. You guys are so nice. All right. I'm going to answer more. Okay. What is your advice? This is such a good question. Like I said, leave this on. Don't jump out of this live stream. Don't jump out of this video because one of these questions is probably going to help you. Okay. Here's the question What's your advice? to others who feel awkward with social media ministry. Here's what I want to say. Get over yourself. People need to hear your message. You've been through hell and back. You suffered a whole bunch of pain and your pain has purpose when you turn it into your testimony. And so get over yourself. As a matter of fact, people are like, I don't want to post on social media because I feel awkward. Don't give me that false humility. Come on, somebody. You listen. People are posting so much madness nowadays. People are posting, uh, you know, every inch, square inch of their naked body on social media. People are posting all kinds of foolish opinions. Matter of fact, it's usually the wisest people don't post. So please, if you feel awkward, you probably have some wisdom. You probably have some revelation from God and you've got to get over yourself. We need your voice. And I'm going to add something to this. It doesn't matter how many likes you get. How many likes something gets is not directly correlated to how good it is. Some of my best messages are my least received messages. You know what I'm saying? So don't let the metrics be the world's metric. Just because they don't amen you in the comments doesn't mean they're not celebrating you in heaven. And so listen, don't. who cares how many likes, how how many followers, how many subscribers? You just got to say what you got to say, what the Lord told you to say. As a matter of fact, I did a video called Why God Removes People. And that video at the time was blurry. My camera wasn't even working right. I didn't know what I was doing. And the original video on YouTube only had, I think, two or 3,000 views. I kid you not. Two years later on YouTube, that video explodes and now has 1.2 million views. The same video, blurry, low quality. I'm 40 pounds fatter than I am right now. If I would have let myself say, you know what? You know, you don't look good. You've at, you've got some weight on you. Your camera's not working. You don't know how to even do this. Don't do it. 1.2 million views would have not happened. Just say yes. All right. I'm going to, somebody asked this question. It's really good. I'm going to keep going, guys. If you want me to keep answering questions, drop in the chat. Just say, keep on going, preacher because I think this is helping somebody. Somebody just asked the question. I didn't see the name, but they said, how do you counteract greed? Okay, let me give you, let me just help you. Look me in my eyes. Greed is fear. Stinginess is fear. When you have faith that God is your supply, you can release what's in your hand, knowing that he's going to release what's in his hand. Woo, come on. Why do we not have a thousand people on this live stream right now? Are you guys sharing this? Come on. If God is your supply, you're not greedy because you're not full of fear because he hasn't given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind and perfect love casts out all fear. And you can let go of what you have because he's already released what he has and heaven's provision is enough. That's why Christians, spirit-filled believers are the most radically generous people on the planet because they said, I can sow a thousand dollars knowing that God is going to give me hundreds of thousands more. It's like the difference between a, you know, do you have an abundance mindset or a scarcity mindset? 
And so it's like, like Jesus, he said, oh, taxes are due. I'm doing the will of my father. I ain't got time to go out there and make money in the traditional way. Why don't we just go open the fish's mouth and pull a coin out? There was supernatural provision to fund supernatural mission. So here's the thing. If you're on mission, if you're doing what God called you to do, you, you say, God, you're going to provide and it's all in your hand anyway. Is this good? Is this helping you? We just broke 400. Thanks guys for sharing and welcome. If you just joined right now, hit the thumbs up if you hadn't already. I'm going to keep going and answering as many questions as possible. It says, um, let's see. Okay, someone asked the question, are there lever levels in walking in holiness? Is holiness positional, progressive, or both? Now, that is a trick question. Somebody trying to, that is a theological trick question. Somebody trying to trap me. All right, let me just say this. When you, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Christ is the Messiah, you will be saved. You are not saved because of your good works. As a matter of fact, you're not saved because you're good. You're saved because he's good. Come on. Jesus was perfect. We'll never be perfect. But even though, and I, did, I want to counterbalance this message, even though we are not per, ever perfect on this side, we are going through a process of perfection it's the perfecting of the faint of the saints. He's working out our spots and blemishes, and we must present ourselves holy and acceptable before him. And so even though the blood of Jesus washes you, even though you receive mercy and you receive grace and you do not come into the kingdom because you are good and you cannot earn it, you can't tithe your way in, you can't worship your way in, you can't preach your way in, you can't read enough of the Bible to get in, even though you cannot earn it. Once you've received it, the Holy Spirit in you will work in you and will begin to convict you and he will begin to bring to the forefront of your mind sin that you didn't even register a sin and that conviction will be so strong and palpable and the fire of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you will begin to refine like a refiner's fire and you'll find yourself praying in the bathroom and praying in the living room and you'll find yourself repenting for things you did 15 years ago that didn't seem that wrong 15 years ago, but he's changing your standard and aligning it with the standard of the word of God. I, somebody hearing me right now. And so, yes, holiness is both instant and it's a process. You are made holy instantly by the blood of Jesus, but you, you go into ever increasing realms of personal holiness as he's working out your salvation through fear and trembling and groanings and travailings and mysteries that you can only utter through noises and fasting and, and, and devotion and washing yourself with the word. It's both. <laughs> you are saved when you're saved, but you are sanctified through a process. And I'm praying to God that somebody just got inspired right now to let the Lord do that process on the inside of you. So for the person who wrote that question, how do you like me now? I know my Bible. Okay, next. <laughs> Any advice for psalmists when the church doesn't really embrace prophetic worship? Go to another church. <laughs> leave your church and find a church that honors the prophetic. What are you doing? Why would you waste your life in a church that doesn't honor the prophetic? What do you, how many scriptures did your pastor have to delete out of the Bible so that they can do the, the kind of services they do on a Sunday? Can somebody just amen me and make me feel a little bit less alone? I felt, ah, can some make me, make me see that I'm not alone. Can just, just say, I'm with you. I'm here. Pastor Mike, I agree. Amen. Somebody help me. If you're going to a church and they don't operate in the prophetic, why do you go to that church? How do you read the New Testament and then cancel the prophetic? What is wrong with you? It's, it's, it, and this is what it is. I'm going to tell you blunt honest because I'm a lead pastor. So I'm speaking with the level of authority on this. Your pastor is moving in the area of their preferences 
and 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 not the area of the calling of the Holy Spirit. And they're saying, well, I don't like prophetic worship. I don't like prophecy. I don't, it makes me feel, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm intimidated by it. It makes, you know, whatever this is, it's like, but we are supposed to walk by faith. We walk by faith. And so when pastors don't walk by faith, they walk by methods. They walk by strategies. They, oh, I know I'm talking to somebody right now. When, when pastors don't walk by faith, they end up walking by uh, repeating the other pastor's program, trying to get the grace on somebody else's program. You know what I'm saying? They, they repeat. They walk by repeating somebody else's church service. God has not called me to be an echo. He's called me to be a voice, a prophetic voice. And so for the person who's just like, well, what, I'm a psalmist and I go to a church that doesn't honor the prophetic, what do you think? They're going to change their mind. And here's the other thing. You can't change your pastor's mind. Stop trying. Matter of fact, the more you attempt to change your pastor's mind, the more you will be tempted by demons to operate in witchcraft and manipulation. So don't even try it. It's not even, that's not how spiritual authority works right? So don't, don't think that you can change your pastor. I can't see, I can't believe how many people come to me and they're like, pastor Mike, we don't do deliverance at my church, but I'm thinking about having a talk with my pastor. And you know what I tell them? Leave your pastor alone. If he believed in deliverance, deliverance would be happening. He obviously believes in worship. Worship happens. He believes in preaching. Preaching happens. He believes in teaching. Teaching happens. You know why deliverance doesn't happen in your church? He doesn't believe it. Oh, but, but, but pastor Mike, he does believe it. He tells me that he believes it. No, you do what you believe. You do what you believe. You know what I'm saying? I can't say, you know, I love my wife, uh, but I live in another house. We, you know, we don't talk to each other ever. Uh, she pays all her bills. I pay all my bills. It's like, uh, I don't think you love your wife. No, no, I, I love my wife. That's how pastors sound who are like, oh yeah, yeah, I believe in deliverance. We don't ever do deliverance. Demons never manifest in our church services. I don't know. You know, it, it's because they don't believe it. They're lying. <laughs> and I know that you could, you're like, I, I can't believe my pastor's lying. Trust what your pastor does, not what he says. Case closed. Case closed. All right, here's a great question. Somebody's asking about medical marijuana. And they're saying, what do you think about medical marijuana? And I think their username was Bob Marley. <laughs> I'm just playing. Oh, guys, are we having fun tonight? If you just joined this uh, stream, can you hit the subscribe button? Join this big old crazy spiritual family. We're having fun tonight. Troy Black, what's going on, man? So good to see you, Troy. We need to stream together or something. I've been seeing your stuff. Um, okay, medical marijuana. Let me tell you, I speak to the root of issues and that annoys some people, but many other people are usually very grateful and they get it. And I speak to the root. The, when, okay, I've answered the question of medical marijuana over and over and over again. Let me tell you what it is. It's people seeking relief. Now, I just want to tell you, I'm a man of God, I'm a pastor, and my primary source of comfort is the Holy Ghost. I don't seek comfort in alcohol. I don't seek comfort in pills. I don't seek comfort in entertainment. I seek comfort in the comforter. And so most people, you don't need medical marijuana. You are seeking it as a form of counterfeit comfort. Now, let me go a little bit deeper for those who do like feel that they need it because of pain, right? Let's go to the root of the pain. In my opinion, a lot of the way in which people use medical marijuana is they circumvent actually getting to the root of what the source of that pain really is. Like, for example, have you changed your diet? Guys, go back and watch my older videos. I'm 40 pounds lighter than I was a year ago. And so it's like I could say, oh, man, my back always hurts. I'm fat. That's why my back hurt. I'm overweight. I need to lose weight. It's like you can't. I, I could be addicted to pain pills because I have lower back pain or I could lose 50 pounds and I lost weight. You know, and, and, I, and I worked, and I know that for some of you are like, I'm clicking off now, I don't need to hear this, but I'm, I'm saying this in love. Whatever condition that you're trying to, uh, to really medicate with marijuana, I would ask you, would you be willing to go deeper on your journey of solving the root issue? Because marijuana is not a cure, okay? You know what I'm saying? Hey, marijuana is not, it doesn't cure anything. 
All right. And so people are going to medical marijuana and they're and they're treating it like it's curing the pain. It's not curing the pain. The pain's as soon as the the effects of the THC wears off, the pain's back. So you're not curing anything. And so get to the root of what's causing it. And then and that's how I deal with everything in life, you know. I, I don't, let me go. Okay, I'll go a little bit deeper because you guys are asking a lot of questions in the comments. Did you know that trauma and pain from your past can present itself as pain in your physical body? Did you know that? You can actually have been, um, you know, you have gone through, you could have gone through SA and as a result of that, you could have physical pain in your body in the form of PTSD, in the form of many different. So it's like I've prayed for people and I've laid my hand on them and said seasons and seasons and seasons are coming out of you right now. Seasons of pain, seasons of trauma and literally pain and trauma has left their physical body and they've received a supernatural healing that was connected to their emotions. And so I don't know, people who are getting involved in medical marijuana, you know, I know what you want me to say. I, I know you want me to say, yes, go do it. But you're not talking to the right person for that. I, I, I live a Nazarite life. I live the fasted life, y'all. You know, is some Christians say, can we drink alcohol? Can we not drink? But why are we asking what we can get away with? That's not how I want to live my relationship with God. You know, the next time I have wine, it's going to be at the marriage supper of the lamb. And so it's like, yeah, I believe in drinking wine. The Bible says that there's going to be a marriage supper with the lamb. I'm just waiting to have communion with the father. I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll exempt myself from alcohol now, but I'm, I'm believing for something greater. And so I think a lot of times Christians are like, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do this? Can I do that? It's like, what does the Holy Spirit want you to do? Like what happened to consulting him? What happened to saying, what do you want, Lord? What pleases you? God, does my life please you? Lord, are you pleased with me? Lord, do you want me to do this, God? You know, because a lot of times what happens is as soon as I say, yeah, you can do it, people go, oh, snap, Pastor Mike released it. We can all do it. That's not how it works. <laughs> the people use me as like an authority, but there's an authority above me, the Holy Spirit. And I think a lot of your questions about, can I do this or can I do that? It's like, why don't you increase in your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit? And then, and then what does he say about it? And the last thing is, if you got to ask, <laughs> if you have to ask if you can do it, what do you think? You probably shouldn't do it. Something's in your conscience. Okay, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay, this is a great question. What does it mean that he is going to judge Christians by their works? Okay, this is so important for you guys to understand there's hyper grace and the hyper grace community they 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 cheapen grace by assuming that just because you've received Christ that your works don't matter at all then there is the legalism and legalism makes the assumption that that in some way you are saved because of your works and your actions but then there is the truth which is you are not saved by any of your works but because you are saved your works will be transformed okay and so when it says he judges them by their works if he is your father, you will do what he commands to do. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself said, they don't do my commands because they are the sons of Satan. And so that's it's that simple. If he, if he is your God, you will do his commands. You will obey him because you're aware of his presence. You believe that he is breathing, that he's alive and resurrected, that he sees, that he knows. And as you are acting and doing things, it's like I'm looking at my phone, but because I'm his, it's his phone. I'm looking at, I'm talking to this person, but because he's on the inside of me, he's talking with this person. And so when you live this relationship with God that has that level of reality, you will simply live a life of good works. And the Holy Spirit gives you power to be witnesses, which means he even empowers you to do those works. Does that make sense? And so if he's judging you 
by your works. Okay, someone asked a question, how did I lose the weight? I'm going to tell you. Now, um, man, I was thinking about doing some kind of physical. I know I did the deliverance challenge, you know, the breakers, the prophecy challenge. I was thinking about doing a physical challenge. I'm still wor- I, I'm still working on even losing a little bit more weight, putting more muscle mass on myself. I'm not, I haven't arrived. I have, but I, you know, 40 pounds later, what I found out about my body is that the more carbs I eat, the the more of a dough boy I become. <laughs> you know, they say you are what you eat. I literally turn into dough. <laughs> and so for me, now, do I think carbs are evil? Do I think they're wrong? No, they might be the, it might be the right thing for your body. But for me, uh, it's like, it's high protein, high vegetables, low carbs, and that's it. And I needed to find stuff that I could eat all the time because I love to eat. So I, I eat unlimited vegetables and I eat, you know, good protein, stuff like that. As a matter of fact, my weight loss was connected to a financial thing because, um, I have a financial advisor and he's a man of God. And he said, you know, with how much money you're spending going out to eat, he said, if you would take that same amount of money, and you would just reallocate it to the most crazy expensive groceries you want, you would probably save money and be healthier. Because he was like, Pastor Mike, I love you. But and and I, I used to eat out of stress. So I was like, you know, it was like a reward. <laughs> it was like a reward. I would basically uh, do some big ministry thing. And then I would be like, oh, praise God, I need to, I deserve the, I, I deserve to eat a whole pizza right now. That's how hard I've worked for God. You know, and I do a whole bunch of deliverance, pray for people, preach. And I'm like, praise God, I'm going to eat a whole foot long sub. I don't know if you guys know about, hey, drop in the chat your favorite food, by the way. I want to see my audience's favorite food. We have over 500 people on right now. What is your favorite food? Um, I had this deli. I live here in New York City and we have delis. And if you don't know what a deli is, you are missing out on life. They, they, ha- they can cook you anything that you desire. I mean, it is sinful, the level that they, these New York City delis, I mean, the, oh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> my mouth started, my mouth started watering while I was talking about that's hilarious. So, I would do ministry, then I would go to a deli and just get like 3,000 plus calories worth of the worst food ever. And then I would be like, man, the Lord loves me. <laughs> and I would I would eat a whole bunch of food. And, you know, I became, uh, that was Big Papa Sig's days. Big Papa Sig's day. Everybody's saying lasagna, pizza. Uh, oxtails and rice. Come on now. I know is somebody, do I have some Jamaicans in the chat? Everybody's representing this. Uh, Oh, somebody asked a question. Okay. Let me get to some more questions. I'm loving this. Some, some, I know what is, what is this? Some of this food, I don't even know what it is. Staten Island pizza. Come on pasta, man. Look at this. Look at all of us. All of us got the same spirit. No, we all, we all need freedom from that carb spirit. Is there a carbs demon? <laughs> Somebody said tacos, Mexican. I love, love, love Mexican food as well. Well, my problem is I love every food. When someone's like, do you like this? Do you like that? Do you like this? My answer is yes, 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 yes. And then I travel all over the world and I eat all their food. Praise God. Don't, I'm trying not to relapse. Okay, so somebody keeps spamming the chat with the question, can I get remarried if my spouse cheated and divorced? Okay. Before I answer that question, make sure that you hit the thumbs up. I'm trying to get a thousand thumbs up on this video so that way YouTube sends it into more people's feeds. So I don't know how many how many thumbs up do we have. Put it in the chat. I'm trying to get to a thousand. Everybody leave the chat, hit the thumbs up and come back, okay? And yes, I said doughboy. <laughs> okay, so biblical grounds for... Actually, the fact that you asked that question is hilarious because if you read the Bible, the biblical grounds for divorce is infidelity. So absolutely, you can you can remarry, okay? Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. <laughs> Somebody says, Pastor Mike, you play too much. Listen, guys, I throw down so many hardcore videos that I need to laugh a little bit. I felt like what you guys needed was some fun. Okay, here's a really basic question that I think is really good for all of you. Um, how to have a relationship with God. Where do you start? I'm going to start with some, and people don't do these things, by the way, the things I'm going to say, you're all going to be like, oh, that answer is so basic. You don't do it. So, so listen, 
it starts with communication and not communication for information, communication for intimacy. Your relationship with God, sometimes it starts with people saying, God, my whole life, it's falling apart. Save me, save me. And that's communication for salvation communication and then it's and then when you become a christian you go from communication for salvation to communication for information and then you're saying god tell me this tell me that and tell me this tell me that and now you're using god like a psychic the best way to have a relationship with god is communication for intimacy and then from intimacy will come information and direction and revelation all that will come. And so most people don't have a relationship with God that's based on, on intimacy. And let's t- let me define intimacy. Intimacy, let's slow down the word. Into me see. So like, God, search my heart. God, I, I want to talk to you about how I've been feeling about some things. God, I want to share some of the things I've been worried about and just tell you about them. God, I I want you to help me understand why I always relapse. God, help me understand why I'm not being consistent. Come into me and see everything that you see. And and or God, I want to know you. Tell me about you, God. Give me a fresh revelation of you. God, I've been serving you for years, but there's so much more of you to know. Let me know it. See how it's different. It's different. People are trying to use God like a genie. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Or God, show me, show me, show me, show me. It's like, you know, you post a video and I'm, I'm going to do it, by the way, because the Lord gave me this crazy word for 2023. But when I post the video that says, you know, prophecy 2023, it's going to go viral. But then when I post the video that says how to fast, it's going to get a hundred views because th- that's just the way that we are. And, and so what I want you guys to do if you're going to be part of this army is I want you to say, God, I want to, I want to become intimate with you. I want, I want you to know me and I want I and me to know you. And really where you see that intimacy is the book of Psalms. If you read that, you just, the psalmist had this, this int- intimacy. Okay. So hopefully that was good. Let's see. That was good. That was good. Oh, this is a good one. Let's talk about some supernatural. Uh, Somebody said, I'm constantly feeling watched by witches. I rebuke it and ignore it. What can happen? You know, there are, there are, okay, I'm going to go deep on this one. There are monitoring spirits. There are familiar spirits. As a matter of fact, even me saying the phrase familiar spirit puts fear in familiar spirits that are listening right now. There are familiar spirits that are in the atmospheres of the homes and the cars and the college dormitories that I'm speaking into right now. Some of you are feeling chills on your legs. You're feeling chills on your back, your spine, your neck, as I'm even saying the, the, the phrase familiar spirits familiar spirits. There are monitoring spirits. Matter of fact, sometimes there are even human spirits, astral projecting into different neighborhoods and environments. And these are real things. These are real things. Now, are you going to find the term astral projection in the Bible? No, but it, it is a phenomenon, a very common phenomenon of human beings uh, traveling in the spirit. There's all kinds of things that, that can happen like that. So Um, familiar spirits, monitoring spirits, human spirits that actually use demonic, um, demonic, uh, how do I put this in a simple way? But there's sometimes there's, uh, human spirits, like human beings that utilize the demonic to actually, uh, see things and to, to, to basically spy on things. And there's people, matter of fact, you see this a lot in the realm of Jezebelic infrastructure. So wherever you see like Jezebel, Ahab, um, it's funny, wherever there's like manipulation, control, domination, wherever there's toxic church leadership, you will see monitoring spirits, people who record things, people who record conversations, people who didn't, and this is how you know it's sometimes demonic, people who didn't even hear a conversation privately, but know the information of the private conversation because they were informed by demons. And if you're thinking, if I sound crazy to you, read your Bible, go a little bit deeper, start praying because this stuff is real. So 
What is that? What, what, what do you do about a monitoring spirit? You have to do warfare. You really have to do warfare. I do believe that you, thank you for the super chats, by the way. Matter of fact, um, we've got about 15 more minutes of questions. I've been answering questions for an hour. And so if you would be so kind, I'm just asking you to please consider sowing into, oh, look at this super chat says, you saved my marriage with the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for the super chat. Isn't it cool getting to see your your name show up here on the screen. But if you would be so willing, if you'd be so generous, my cash app is Mike Signorelli. My Venmo is Mike Signorelli. It is Giving Tuesday. And then the pinned comment is how you can give if you want to sow there as well. And whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to sow, just be obedient to the Holy Spirit because I am raising funds to travel and to come minister to you guys this year and I'm working on some special things. I'm working on debuting a mobile app and some other things for you guys, some new e-courses, some free things like that. So go ahead and so I'm, I'm gonna continue to answer questions for another 15 or 20 minutes. So, so here's the thing. Let's talk about monitoring spirits. Let's talk about Ahab, Jezebel. You've got to do uh, spiritual warfare, but then sometimes you also have to um, actually remove people from your life that are connected to those spirits. Sometimes what happens is people stay in relationship and they and, and I want you to see it like this in the spirit. You're holding hands with the person, but on the other side, the person's holding hands with the devil. So you're saying, well, I'm only holding hands with this person. Like I'm still friends with them. We're still cool. But they're on the other hand, they're holding hands with the devil. So what ends up happening is you are holding hands with the devil by holding hands with them. That's being unequally yoked. So two animals used to be yoked together by the neck and and they would plow together. And when you're unequally yoked, you're all it's a burden to one person and a blessing to the other. And so what happens when you're unequally yoked is one animal is up high and the other one's low because they're unequal. And the one that is low is being picked up and held up by the one that's high. And so the one that's low benefits and the one that's high actually experiences the burden. So when you're unequally yoked, you are carrying them, but they never have the ability to carry you. You are helping them, but they never help you. You're the one driving the car and they're never the one putting the gas in the car. Y'all know what I'm saying. And so many of you guys don't realize that you are unequally yoked, even with Christians. That scripture unequally yoked doesn't say Christian and non-Christian necessarily. And so there's people who call themselves Christians. They're a burden. You need to break up with the burden. Man, I'm getting some clips out of this one tonight. I'll tell you what. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for sewing. I see your um, I see your cash apps and your Venmos and, and all that. And, and matter of fact, if you want to become a monthly partner, see how right here it says breakthroughteaching.com. I have e-courses and monthly Zooms. I just got out of a monthly Zoom with my partners. And so if you want to become a monthly partner, go to breakthroughteaching.com and sign up there. And that would be great to see you in the Zooms. Matter of fact, we only had... 120 people on the Zoom. And so it's a smaller setting sometimes. And you can, we do breakout rooms and I float between the breakout rooms sometimes, pray for people. It's really cool. We pray for each other. We meet people. Okay, let me answer some more questions. <laughs> this is hilarious. Julie, are you still awake? My wife just literally, she, she I don't know if you can see this. She put in the questions, uh, take me to Capitol Grill. Girl, I ain't trying to spend money on that. Capital Grill is expensive. Uh, let's see. How do you recognize a closed door? Man, that's uh, that's such a hard question to answer. It's too generic. How do you recognize a closed door? I, I would just say this: you need to you need to recognize that God will give you instructions. You know what I mean? Um, and so if it's, see, the thing about the mercy of God is even when there's a closed door, God can open another, he can open a window. You know what I'm saying? God is so merciful. The door closed and you missed it, but he'll open a window and still get you on the right path. And it's like, some of you guys are afraid. Let me, let me put it like this. Oh, what's up from Israel, my friend. Oh, I just saw you in the chat. My is my, my friend from Israel's in the chat. What's up, my man. So let me, let me help you understand. You, you can't be so afraid 
that question, what, what about a closed door? What if I miss the will of God? That's a fear-based question. Are you still alive? If you're not dead, you're not done. If you're still alive, that there's still a plan. The, the, come on, somebody. God has already made a way. Why are you still here? That's the proof that, that God is with you. And so don't be so worried about that. Let me get back to another question. I'm going to try to do a lightning round. How many of you would like a lightning round? Let's do this. Man, these questions are good. These questions are good. Hopefully you laughed a little bit. You know, seriousness is not a fruit of the spirit, but joy is. Somebody quote me. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, oh man, that's good. Thoughts on the Catholic Church. Um, basically the Pope, you know, when it all fell apart. I get asked about the Catholic Church all the time. I actually debated a renowned Catholic theologian on YouTube. I think it's still up. I'm going to try to get that video. And he is a big contributor to Catholic.com. And so may, maybe you missed that. The thing about Catholicism is this. And I'm going to keep it 100. There are a lot of Catholics who love the Lord. There are a lot of Catholics who are going to heaven, who have legitimately received Christ as their Savior, and who are walking that narrow path. I truly believe that. But Catholicism as a whole, the way that they teach doctrine and theology has the unintended consequences and sometimes the intended consequences of leading people astray. Let me tell you. Let me give you some examples. When I was debating the renowned Catholic theologian, I said, well, why do you pray to the saints? And he said, we don't pray to the saints. We petition the saints to pray for us, which is if it comes off very pharisaical when it's like, no, you, you are talking to dead people, which is necromancy and strictly prohibited uh, by the Bible. And so God says, we are not to talk to people who have passed on. We do not communicate to the dead at all. That is not, God does not ever, um, you know, God does not ever allow that. And, and so they'll say, well, well, what about this scripture? What about that scripture? And so what they do, like Catholic theologians, Catholic priests, is they take scriptures out of context, they distort them and twist them, and then they're elusive. And so here's my thing. And then I'll say, well, you know, why do you worship Mary? And they'll say, we don't worship Mary. We just hold her in high esteem because she accepted the assignment of bearing and birthing Christ. But it's like, okay, but you understand this is where I go back to that phrase, intentional and unintentional. So it's like, if you're, if you truly believe that, that you're not worshiping her, you're just holding her high esteem, you're unintentionally leading people astray because it's producing worship, even if you say what you say. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you might be intentionally leading people astray because you know what you're doing is wrong, but you're, you're lying and you're communicating like you, you, like it's not. So, you know, we don't worship Mary. We don't pray to Mary. Mary was a servant just like any other human servant in the Bible. We pray. This is the, the gospel is now because the veil has been torn. That veil separated the inner courts from the Holy of Holies. When Jesus said it is finished and died on the cross, the Bible gives an account that that veil was torn. It was rent. And now we can go boldly before the throne of grace directly. And the Bible is very clear that because of Jesus, we are a nation of priests. In other words, we are the priests. A priest is not a person that you go to to confess. You are the priest who actually goes and, and you can go boldly before the throne of grace directly to God yourself. And so a lot of Catholicism is like a new covenant installation of old covenant patterns. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, we don't need a mediator. Jesus is the mediator. And because we have Jesus, we don't need a human in, uh, mediator. And so a lot of Catholicism, what it, what it unintentionally or intentionally teaches people is it teaches, the, the effect of it is it teaches you to marry and the saints are your mediators. They carry out things on your behalf. So then guess what? When you pray to a saint that helps you with something, then, then what happens? 
happens, who do you give the glory to if it happens? The saint. But what happens, and I'm going to go even deeper now, there are Christ, there are demons, hear me, there are demons that masquerade as the names of the saints. And when you pray to saints, those demons carry out your prayers so that you can actually confirm your prayer and then you can continue to believe the lie that those saints did something on your behalf. There are demons that I've cast out of people that call themselves Mary. They call themselves Mary. They call themselves Saint this, Saint that, Saint that. And they are demons. How do you, the devil is in the blessing business too. This is good, y'all. Did say, listen, Satan took Jesus to the mountaintop and said, you see all this? I'll give it to you. And so when you get things from saints that you've been praying to, they could be demons that are actually doing what the devil did with Jesus, tempting you to receive a counterfeit. You got to be wiser than this, y'all. That's why you subscribe to my channel because you're coming up <laughs> to the next level. Is this helping you guys? I know that was a deep dive. I've gotten waves and waves and waves of hate for what I've said about Catholicism. But the problem is they don't listen to my whole video. First of all, they listen to like a first few minutes, get super mad, and then they start commenting and canceling and all that. They, number two is they, they're intellectually dishonest, which means that they're not admitting what they're doing or the effect of their the, theology. You know what I mean? And so I just don't, for me, it's like, I'm just telling y'all straight up. Now there are spirit filled Catholics that speak in tongues. There's all different iterations of it, but I will not, I will not, um, endorse Catholicism. Okay. And, uh, I don't, that's, I'll just stop there <laughs> before I get myself in any more trouble. All right. But you know, somebody says, what's the best way friends with the Holy spirit says, what is, okay. By the way, I should be ending the broadcast. Now we have almost 600 people on my question to you guys is, should I end the broadcast now? Like I was supposed to, or should I go for another five to 10 minutes and the main motivation that I've got is hitting the thumbs up. And so hit the thumbs up and that will be your sign. Did we get to a thousand thumbs up yet? So go ahead and do that. Hit the thumbs up. Let's see if we get to a thousand thumbs up. I don't even know if we're close yet. Jump out of the chat, go to the thumbs up, hit the thumbs up, and then somebody come back and tell me how many we have. And if you want me to, okay, everybody's saying keep going. All right, so I'll keep going. <laughs> 10 more minutes, I'll keep going. All right. I am having fun and you guys are asking the best questions. Somebody says only five. Look, you're making me cry. Only 500, only 500 thumbs up. I thought we'd have so many more than that. Let's try to get to, to, let's try to get to a thousand thumbs up. Okay. So what's the best way to control your mind? Okay. The way you ask that question is great because you don't control your mind. Matter of fact, we don't have the ability to control our mind. It's impossible. The only thing you can do is yield the control to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, think about whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is noble. So your mind is, imagine like a brick house. The way that you build a brick house is brick by brick by brick by brick by brick. One single brick at a time. So the what you want to do is build your mind one thought at a time. So you build demonic strongholds brick by brick. How many of you would like a, an e-course on strongholds? I'd love to do an e-course on strongholds. If I did an e-course on strongholds, would you take it? Okay, so it, it, what you do is you think fear, 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 anxiety, 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 anxiety. It's not going to work out. Nobody loves me. They hate me. And every time you think that thought and you have, you know, literally tens of thousands of thoughts a day and they're mainly on repeat, then what happens is you're building up strongholds. Now, the thing about a stronghold is that the Bible talks about running into a stronghold for safety. So there's actually two kinds of strongholds. There's a demonic stronghold, but then there's a stronghold of righteousness and it's a refuge. So you could actually build up righteous strongholds. In other words, you can build your mind up to understand the things of God and your mind could be the safest place. Your mind could be the, matter of fact, 
It could be chaos all around you, but you're so filled in your mind with the word of God that you run and you retreat into that stronghold and you're, and you're, you're okay in your own mind. And so your mind should not be a place you're trying to escape. Your mind should actually be a stronghold that you can run into and say, man, this mind is redeemed. It's righteous. I've built my mind up. And, you know, people show their, their body off all the time. You know, when you work out and, hey, look at my, my pecs, look at my six pack abs. You know, what if we showed off our mind, the work that we did to our mind? What if we flexed our mind? What if it was like, man, look at this. You know, my mind was so fill, filled with worry and doubt, anxiety, fear, apprehension, but I pulled down those demonic strongholds, but I've I've built it back up. And a lot of it comes to, you know, just repeatedly saying the word of God and then thinking the word of God and, and meditating on the word of God. And the more that you do that, his thoughts become your thoughts. A lot of times people ask me the question, how do you know, by the way, is this helping you? Let me know in the comments, is, is this helping you? A lot of times Christians, they tell me, Pastor Mike, how do I know that if it's that I'm hearing from God or if it's my thoughts? And you know what I always tell them? If you rehearse the scriptures enough, then you won't know the difference between your thoughts and his thoughts because they're the same thoughts. Come on, I'm helping somebody. Like the goal is that you don't know the difference between your thoughts and his thoughts because your thoughts are his thoughts. That's the goal is I can't even tell if it's God or if it's me because I've submitted and conformed my thoughts, not to this world, but to his word. And because I'm thinking what he wants me to think and I'm rehearsing what he wants me to rehearse and I'm meditating on what he wants me to meditate, I can't hardly tell the difference. All right. Matter of fact, it should scare you if you get a word from God and it's so different than what you think that you're like, oh man, I don't even know if that, what, wow, that should scare because you should be conforming your mind to his word, not the world. So that, that's my thing is like when you read the Bible, Genesis through Revelation, you get in touch with, um, you, when you, you get in touch with the character of God, you get in touch with the, the, the personality of God. And so then when he tells you to do something in the spirit prophetically, you say, oh yeah, that's just how, that's just his character. That's what he's like. But if you don't know his word, you don't know his character. And if you don't know his character, you can't get confirmation. And if you can't co get confirmation, you're going to seek um, prophecy through other people. And then the more you seek prophecy through other people, you're going to start becoming a spiritual whore. And then the more you go into that journey of spiritual whoredom, you're going to start treating it like, like psychic medium stuff. And then you're going to end up in witchcraft. So it's like, you really got to go back. It all comes back to the word. What does the word say? Then I'm going to say that. And I'm going to think that. And I'm going to breathe that. And I'm going to put scriptures up on my wall. And I'm going to put, I'm going to take a marker and write scriptures on my mirror. And I'm going to put post-it note scriptures in my car. And I'm going to put scriptures in the refrigerator. And I'm going to put scriptures everywhere. And so everywhere I look, because your eyes are the window to your soul, which is why the devil loves loves phones because he's trying to get things through your eyes, right? Your eyes are the windows of your soul and he's always trying to get you to look at something. So you have to sabotage the enemy's kingdom and say, everywhere I look, I'm about to see the word now. I'm going to see scriptures everywhere. There were seasons in my life where, there, where I had put scriptures all over my bedroom, all over my bathroom, all over my, my everywhere because I was hijacking my mind. I was saying this mind is cursed. This mind is full of demonic strongholds. This mind is, is torment, full of torment. And I've got to sabotage myself by putting scripture everywhere. And then I had to say, I can't listen to secular music. I have to listen to worship. I have to listen to godly music. I have to listen to things that edify me and build me up. I need people singing scriptures. I need to see scriptures scriptures with my eyes. I need friends that tell me scriptures and I just sabotaged myself in a holy, righteous way. All right. Somebody asked the question here, how do we walk by the spirit? Great question. This is going to be a great question for the, for the year 2023. Walk by the spirit. I'm going to tell you how. You commit first, then you do it. You, you don't like, here's the thing. When you walk by the flesh, you'll say, when I have enough money, then I'll go. 
That's not how the spirit works. You move first in the spirit. In the spirit, you start packing yourself up and you go. And people are like, you only have $5. How are you going to do this? I, the Lord told me to do it. It's got to work. Um, you know what I mean? You don't wait until the water becomes walkable. You step out of the boat and when your foot touches it, it becomes walkable. That's how you do it. You get what I'm saying? You, you, Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. You're not healed. You, you don't pick up your mat after you walk. It's, he said, pick up your mat and walk. In other words, when you pick up your mat, you'll be healed and you can start walking. Don't, don't wait till you can walk to pick up your mat. We got to get the order right to walk in the spirit means I'm committing and I'm moving first. I don't need a promise. I don't need money. I don't need finances. I don't need three and four and five confirmations. God, I'm going to be immediately obedient. That's what, how you walk in the spirit. Only the first time he tells you to speak to that person, you, you open your mouth and start talking. Even if you sound like a fool, because you'll start to sound wise because he always fills an empty mouth. If he told you to open it, Oh, I know this is helping somebody. Is this helping you? Is this good? So the thing about walking in the spirit, it's the opposite. In the spirit, you go to, or I'm sorry, in the flesh, you go to 12 years of school, then you get a diploma. In the spirit, you are immediately obedient, then you are qualified. It's like the complete opposite. You might even learn after you do something. Like I learned how to preach after I preached. I know that doesn't make any sense to you, but I said yes to preaching Walked up there, 15 years old, the first 30 seconds I'm stuttering, then a lightning bolt of God's anointing hits me, and then all of a sudden I begin to preach, and then for the last 25 years I've been learning about how to get better at preaching. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Walk by the Spirit. It means, now let me talk, let me give you one more, more answer to this because it's going to help. Let me tell you what the soul is. Because if you understand what the soul is, then you could say, oh, I'm walking by the soul. I'm not walking by the spirit. So here's how you walk by the soul. Your soul is your intellect, your mind, and your soul is your, your flesh. Or I'm, Lord, what am I saying? Your soul is your emotions. Your flesh is another category. This might be my sign that I got to end it. It's been a long day. But let me answer this and then, and then we'll wrap it up. So stay on. Because I'm going to tell you some crazy announcements at the end while, while we hang out towards the end. But so your soul is your intellect, it's your mind, and it's your emotions. So if, if you are saying, well, I, I do the things that I do for God when I feel like doing it. When I feel creative, I create. When I feel like writing, I write. When I feel like grinding out this business and, and being an entrepreneur, I do it. Then you're telling me you're led by your soul. Because you only do it if your feelings dictate it. If you're, if you feel like laying down, you lay down. If you feel like giving up, you give up. If you feel like, so your emotions, then the mental side, this is your intellect. If you're led by your mind is if you say, oh, I, you know, I, I think I can go to Israel when you guys go on the trip, because if I save this money and then 16 and then four and then three and the two, I move this there. Yeah. If I add it all up, I think I can get to Israel. You're being led by your mind because you're, you're making a decision based out of your intellect. Being led by the spirit is different. Being led by the spirit says, God, do you want me to go to Israel? If the answer is yes, I'm going to commit. And then I believe the provision's going to come. It's just another level. God, do you want me to launch this business? I'm going to do it. And, and then I believe that the provision will follow it. Does that make any sense? So sometimes it's easier to understand that I'm let that like, are you being led in the soul and are you, which is your mind and your emotions because yeah. So that's, that's the thing you got to understand. Cause it's easier sometimes to be like, oh man, I'm not walking by the spirit. I'm walking by the soul. And there's no blessing on that straight up because there's things that God will tell you to do that will defy logic. It will not make sense, but you have to be obedient to do it. You have to be obedient to, um, you know what I mean? To, to like, to do it, to, to walk it out. All right. So hopefully that helped you. Okay. Let's do this. I want to spend a couple more minutes as we're winding down. I'm feeling it now. <laughs> you guys have so many more questions. How many of you would like, if I did something like this, 
you know, once, uh, once, twice, three, four times a month. Did you guys like this? This was a different kind of stream. I know we didn't have 2000 people on, we had like 600 people on, but did you like this? Was, did you get something out of this? Would you like me to do more Q and A's? Um, you know, do, do you like this kind of content and, you know, let, let me know, let me know if you like this, drop a comment and let me know. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys some announcements. I want you to play, pay very close attention to these announcements, but while I'm giving these announcements, I would love for you guys to take an opportunity to, sow. if you're just joining on the broadcast and you didn't hear me say it already, today is giving Tuesday and I am raising finances to do ministry travel this year. I want to come and do deliverance and healing and prophecy and preach and, and all that. And so I have Cash App and Venmo, which is my name, Mike Signorelli. It's on the screen right there. And then the pinned comment is also how you can give via PayPal, and then you can consider becoming a monthly partner. But however you give or a super chat, thank you so much for sewing tonight. Guys, if you're offended by me asking for people to sew, just understand that very few people really do. Uh, thousands and thousands of people watch our videos. I do them for free, but um, literally dozens. It's not even hundreds. It's like dozens of people actually sew. And so I don't want you to say like, well, man, this is, he had 600 people watching him, you know, probably 300 people gave and he's probably filthy rich. Like, honestly, the um, it's probably going to be like 20 people most. And so um, I definitely don't uh, do this for the finances, but uh, you guys saw that last year or, or this year, 2022, um, I raised funds and actually did over 41 dates and showed up all over the United States and other countries and prayed for people for six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours. And so you guys know that I'm good ground. And if you are looking for a place to give today on Giving Tuesday, um, so whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Some of you, I know somebody in the comments earlier, they said, I gave my widow's might. And so I just want to thank you. Some of you guys, you can only give $2 and that's your last $2. There's others who can give significantly more. And, 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 and you know, so whatever the Lord's telling you to do, go ahead and do it. Okay, let me give you some announcements. So we are doing an Israel trip and I'm going to Israel. I only have a hundred slots for Israel. And I'm going to read the Let's see. I'm going to read you the dates for Israel so that you can look at your calendar because we are locking in the last bit. We're securing the flights. There's only 100 spots. And if you want to go to Israel, you're going to have to get in within the first 100 people to commit. Now, I also want to warn you, not every Israel trip is done with the same level of excellence. Okay. There's a lot of people all over doing trips to Israel and some of them are going to be awesome. Some of them are going to be amazing, but I've been to Israel and the, and when you go to Israel and, and you, you can, you, let me tell you, if you go with the wrong people, it's going to go from a dream trip to a nightmare. Okay, so you got to go with the right people, the right chemistry, the right the right people, and and so you you want to make sure that you go to the right trip. And then um, the other thing about Israel is it has to be the right sequence, it has to be the right tour because there's so much to see. You're not going to be able to see everything all at the same time, and so you've got to make sure that you are being intentional. So I put together an Israel tour after going to Israel myself and doing speaking tours and being a part of it. I put together a trip that even the tour guides were like, Pastor Mike, we do this for a living. And this trip is the most favorite itinerary we've ever put together. And so if you want to go to Israel with me, now, the other thing I want to say is you could find, I'm just going to be straight up. You can find ch cheaper trips to Israel. Like this is not the cheapest trip but you get what you paid for. And that's all I'm going to say. When, by the time you get six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days of travel in and you're sick and tired of garbage food because you, you tried to save money and now you're, you went to this cheap Israel trip and you, and it's garbage food and you're staying in bad hotels and you're, and you're riding around in rickety vehicles, you're going to hate that experience. So the trip that I put together, I'm telling y'all, I put together like really premier nice hotels, really good food, 100 people I limited it to because I want to be able to, um, there, we have two, two state-of-the-art new tour buses 
that have uh, 50 people each. They're beautiful. And I want to be able to like personally meet you, hang with you, eat, eat meals with you, pray with you. Like this trip is intimate so that, so it's like, once I send that link, it's going to fill up fast and it's going to be in October, October 11th through the 20th. Okay. So if you guys want to go to Israel, um, you guys know that I'm a biblical scholar. I'm the president of V1 College. And so I'm not, I'm going to bring some heavy, heavy revelation, historic sites. I have some really high level qualified tour guides. And then we're going to do Shabbat in Jewish homes uh, right there in Jerusalem. It's just going to be off the charts, guys. But I'm going to be releasing that information very, very soon. And so um, you want to get on that. Okay, next. I am, I don't want to say that date because it's not, not up yet because I'm going to, I might be doing something uh, in December 31st, but in the month of January. So I want you guys, anytime that you think about it, go to MikeSignorelli.com because when you go to my website, I have an events page and you can always see where I'm going to be. So in the month of January, I'm going to be in two places in California. Number one, I'm doing an event that I think sold out already with uh, Jenny Weaver is going to be there. John Ramirez is going to be there. And Isaiah Saldivar is going to be there. And then from there, uh, we are actually going to, I'm going to be preaching at Isaiah Saldivar's church. And so uh, it's a you know, shout out all of, uh, all of the, my California fam. So in the month of January, that's going to be huge. And I'm getting ready to update my, my event. So the things I'm talking about now, you can check back to MikeSignorelli.com and you can see where you can catch me. The other thing is I'm going to be doing another event within New York City with Saturate and um, with Prophet Tommy and with Jeremiah Johnson, who's a renowned prophet as well. And that's going to be in New York City. So 2023 is going to be exciting. V1 Conference is going to be announced and we're doing that again. And we're going to have a special location for that. So make sure that you guys uh, start you know, thinking about coming out for V1 Conference. 2023 is I'm going to be at the Altar Global, with the, which is Jeremiah Johnson's church. And I'm super excited to minister at their church. And I am going to be doing so many other things. I, I had a conversation today about coming back to the UK. There's a huge demand for me to come back to the United Kingdom. And there's many people who really want to see more, um, just more ministry in, in the UK. And they're excited about it. And so today I had a conversation in, oh, thank you so much for that super chat. You and Mark the Messenger have helped so much. God's chosen all. Oh, thank you. Wow. What a generous gift. Wow. hundred dollars, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, we are, yeah. So just basically keep going back to MikeSignorelli.com to get all the resources and to also, you know, let me, let me say this because we're talking about dates and different things happening. So when you go to MikeSignorelli.com, here's what you'll find there. And then I'll, I'll leave you on this note. Okay. Thank you, Andrew, by the way, you guys, your comments are so awesome. So I have Bible reading plans that are in the YouVersion Bible app. So if you're like, I don't know what to read in the Bible, please read one of my Bible reading plans. So you go to MikeSignorelli.com and pick one of my YouVersion Bible plans. You can do it with your friends. You could do that now. Also, I have courses, e-courses. Those are also on my site for free. If you want to be trained, go check that out. Then I have a blog. And on my blog, I routinely update um, preaching or I'm sorry, teachings, and you can read my blog and you can learn about different topics. And you probably could scroll through my blog and find a whole bunch of stuff that really feeds you. So there's a lot of resources at MikeSignorelli.com that maybe none of you have ever uh, seen before. So just go, go, you know, you see the spelling of my name here, go there. Somebody said, come to Illinois. So I actually have a, I have a church campus in Northwest Indiana. So I go to Northwest Indiana as frequently as I can, and I preach in person. And anytime I do, I also try to send messages to everybody in my text community and in my email community that are in Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio sometimes to get there to that Northwest Indiana campus. So um, I don't know that I have any specific Illinois dates on the calendar yet, but I know that when I come to Indiana, I'll be close enough for you to come to me. All right, guys, 
tonight's been amazing. And I'm 20 minutes after, which means I've been live for a long time. Thank you guys so much for the super chats and all of your sewing on this Giving Tuesday. I will tell you what, I am good soil and you made a really good decision to invest in this ground. So, um, man, I love this. Great questions. So anyways, I'm going to sign off, guys. Thank you. Oh, let me check this out. Let's see. Oh, I got my music. <laughs> Come to San Antonio, Texas. Come to New Jersey. I was just in New Jersey for an event, actually. Are you going to the Art Global? When are you going to the Art Global? Go to MikeSignorelli.com and you can see it there. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, this year I'm announcing V1 Church Missionaries. Some of you might become missionaries this year. Go to, make sure you stay connected. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Yes, yes, yes. What else? <laughs> uh, good night, guys. It's been great hanging out with you. Israel trip cost. It's all going to be announced maybe this week or next week because we're finalizing the flights. So I don't have the exact cost yet. Somebody says, Roll Tide, Alabama represent. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for coming to Connecticut for Domino. It uh, it, it was everything, everything uh, you do is so important. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I'm just reading these comments right now. Good night, everybody's saying. Can you guys hear the, the music? Are you feeling it? <laughs> it's been so good tonight. Until next time, goodbye, everybody. Love you guys. Good night. Oh, can't wait to see you on the next live stream.